Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the Invoice Payments Manager. In this week's training, I'm going to show you how to create this incredible invoice payments application complete with one click apply payments, applying payments to multiple invoices, previous payments navigation, automated invoice balances, and we're going to do it all from scratch. Every feature, every function, formula, and line of code built before your eyes. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me here today. I've got a really fantastic training. It's going to be from scratch. This is what we are going to build an invoice payments manager. We will be able to add brand new payments. We're going to be able to navigate to previous payments. We'll be able to edit those previous payments. If a customer has a balance, we're going to be able to see that. We're going to be able to apply payments to multiple invoices if a customer has multiple open invoices and we'll be able to apply just like by selecting or of course we can edit the payment amount and we can enter the total payment amount here delete payments previous and next add new save payments now the best thing about this application of course is that it's already tied to this invoice now previously we did this invoice training this dynamic invoice last week and so now we're building on top of that so if you want to catch last week's training on this dynamic incredible invoice i have that for you available i'll make it for you put the link down in the description and that was a great training so we're building on top of that now creating now a payment structure on top of that this is a sample this is exactly what we are going to be creating i'll be putting this away and of course building it for you i hope you do like these trainings we're going to be going back to every single week as you have and of course i'll try to do more from scratch a lot of you asked me to do from scratch i can do smaller applications just like this when they're from scratch the larger applications we're still going to have to walk through otherwise larger applications you know would take five six hours and i don't think we always have that kind of time although some of you do and still as much as i would love to do that we'll try to keep these trainings down to one to two hours if possible i know they're long and extensive but i try to give you as much value as possible each and every training and i do appreciate your continued support if you do like to support us there's several ways that you can do that first of course very simply just by subscribing to the channel clicking that like button or commenting below let me know what you like any feedback you have i create these trainings for you each and every week so i do appreciate it another way to do that is through our patreon form now patreon i create these trainings every single week and of course i take your suggestions your ideas your comments and i put them into a brand new updated training for these templates i put in whatever features you might want to add whatever fixes there might be and of course i focus on certain areas so the feature fix or focus is a great updated training with an updated workbook we also have pdf workbook downloads and that means all the code in a beautiful pdf format i add that on patreon lots of other features going on into the patreon platform where i answer your questions directly through the comments and of course private messaging there as well so join us on patreon that would be great all right let's get started so this is exactly what we're going to be able to create add new delete previous and next payments and they're going to be able to apply that what we're going to do this is a sample we're putting this away i'm going to put this over on another screen i can take a look at it and this is the one we are going to create so we've got a blank screen here payments notice it's completely empty we're building it we've got an admin screen that's already done now the admin screen most of that is for the previous application the only thing that i've added to this is something called payment types payment types is going to allow us to do payment types we have a payment list these are a list of payments that got created so every time we add a new payment and then individual items per payment we'll be adding here so these are individual when we make an individual payment on a specific invoice that gets tracked here invoice the rest of this is part of another the rest of the invoice application which we covered in other trainings but it's all combined to create a really cool application we also have a list of invoice a list of invoice items for the invoices customer list items in a calendar pop-up okay so this is what i want to focus on this payment so this is the screen that we're going to be working on right now and so the first thing what i want to do is i want to reserve columns a and b for admin so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to highlight those here if you've seen my videos before you do understand that we use these for admin and we'll be using just a few information there and then what we'll do is on the top line maybe what we'll do is we'll add a larger text so what i'll do is call this invoice payments manager as you saw in the sample invoice payments manager and what we're going to be doing on this is i want to add of course a fade out just a little bit of a color so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to format these cells and I'll give it a fill. Now, of course, your color ranges may be different, but that's okay. Fill effects here. And then what we'll do is I'll add a little bit using this blue and this medium. So we're going from medium to lighter and then I'm going to click OK. And I'm just going to copy this format all the way over here and we can highlight and then we're going to paste those formats in here. I want to give this a larger font. We'll go with, let's say, 30. And I'm going to give it a different type of a font here. We'll go with Arial Rounded here, which is one of my favorites, Arial Rounded Empty Bold. I'll double click on this. That's going to expand it automatically. We have Invoice Payments Manager. And I'll give it a color like this, okay? All right, maybe 30 is a bit big. So we'll go with 26. It's going to take up because I've got this zoomed in. Okay, the next line, what we do, this button is going to be for our button row. So we're going to make sure that we have enough space for our buttons on this row here more like a menu so also give it some fill effects and we're going to start out at the same color and go to a lighter color this lighter color is going to be our background color so it's going to go from darker to lighter clicking ok and then i'm just going to select a bunch of cells down here and then i'm going to give it that main background color here that i want all the way up to column p so we'll go ahead and do that so we've got that here and this is going to be for our button sets and then what i want to do inside let's say uh, d what i want to create this is going to be our apply so i want to apply that so our table is going to be down here starting at let's say d10 i'm going to call this apply a so when we apply payments we want to select it so that's going to be applied. The next column over, I want to do invoice date. And then I'm going to have the invoice number. After that, invoice amount. And after that, previous payments. And then I want the balance here. So what is the balance? And then whatever the uh, amount applied. And I'm going to format that with our theme. So I'm going to highlight that. We'll go all the way borders around it. And then format those cells. Sorry, it's off the screen. And then fill effects similar to our theme. So we'll use a fill effects here. And then we'll use the two color theme here, which is the same as our theme. And then down here. Okay, so that's going to be sufficient there. And then I'll go ahead and do Control B. That's going to bold it, and then we'll center that. I like that for the total. I also want to know what the total applied is. So we'll just put that here. Total applied. And I want to know how would I know what is applied. So I'm going to italicize that. And basically, every time I select something here, I want that amount. To all everything that we've applied here, so it's going to be this column, but only for those selected. So that's what that's going to be. So let's put inside three. This is going to be our customer. I wanted to select a customer. We're going to skip a row. We're going to put our payment type. And then I'm going to skip another row and we're going to put payment notes. And this will be a double row for that. So I'm going to hold down the control and I'm going to merge and center all three of these. And then I'm going to write justify. So merge and center, and then write justify that. Then what we do inside, let's say F and G, I want the same thing. F and G, those are going to be the fields. I'm going to color those white. Merge and center and left justify that. Payment notes, we're going to extend all the way to let's say J. So we're going to merge and center that left justify upper and color white. Okay, so that's going to be our payment notes. So I put the top. Next up, I want to also have a payment date. So inside column I, I'm going to put the label payment date. And then I want payment amount. We'll abbreviate that. Also giving it our theme, which is white and then left justify it. So I'm going to hold down the control and we're going to do some borders. I'm going to format those cells a little bit off the screen, giving it borders that are fit our theme. So we'll do a border and then I'll do a color. Let's say this color, all the outline borders. And on the left side, we're going to do that dotted line, not diagonal. Okay. I like that similar holding down the control button. We are going to then format those cells here. And then I want to use the same border, but this time I'm going to use the, the straight line on the upper, left, and the lower one, keeping that dotted line on the bottom. Okay, I like that. I'm going to format this cells too. This one, I just want that solid here because that's on the, the right there. That's the way it looks good. We've got payment date, customer, payment type, and notes. And then we have our table down here. Now our table, I'm just going to give it a white color, a white base color all the way from column D to column J and giving it that white. So we've got that way. I also want to give it some conditional formatting a little bit different here. So as we add data here, I want that conditional formatting to appear here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all these and we can highlight more, but that's a good start. Conditional formatting, manage rules. And I, for all of them, I want to put a dotted line. So I'm going to click a new rule, use a formula, and that's going to be basically any line with a value where let's say the invoice date does not equal empty. And it's gonna be for any row, so I'm not gonna put the dollar sign before the 11. 
and I'm going to say it does not equal empty. So it does not equal empty there. And that's going to be for the rule. And all I want to do is just simply add a dotted line here. So we're going to do the border here using that same color that we've been using, that darker blue. And I'm going to add a lower border. So that means for every line with a value, I want to put it there. I like that. That looks good. Now what I want to do is I also want to add some. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So now as we add an invoice date, we get that color. Okay, good. So I want to also work on alternating rows. Now alternating rows, what I want to do is I want to give them a little bit more of a color like you saw in the sample, but I only want to do that for this because I want the amount applied to show up a white, you know, always white because that way the user knows those are user entered field that are in white, whereas the colored backgrounds tend to be a little bit darker. You know, they're not editable there. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on new rules, conditional formatting. Now this is going to be based on two conditions, equals and, so it's two conditions. The first condition is whether there is a value in column E. So again, in the column starting in E. The second value is going to be what is going to be an even row. So what we'll do is we'll do mod row here. Mod of row two equals zero. Those are even rows. And I want to give that a format. And I'll go into the fill. And I'll give it a single fill color. But fill effects, I've got some saved colors here. This is a very light color here and a light blue. So I've got that here and click OK. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this because I also want it for the odd rows, but I don't want to retype that. So I'm going to click on OK. And I only want it to apply to the, these rows. That's correct. That's what I want. And then I want to do conditional formatting and then new rule. I'm going to use a formula. I'm going to paste in that, but this is going to be for odd rows. So I'm going to put in a one here. I'm going to format that. I'm going to give it a little bit darker color. So we're going to go to the fill effects. And we're going to choose this darker color here. It's going to give us a nice alternating. OK, so I like that there. That looks good and click OK. And then OK. So we see how we've got darker and lighter here. But now I just want to do one thing is I want to add the same rule here, but I want to extend this. So that way we've got an extension that looks a little bit nicer. All I'm going to do is conditional formatting, manage the rules. And in the lighter one, I'm just going to extend that to one additional column to include J. So that's going to give it a nice look. And of course, we only want it to affect those particular rows that contain a value. So we're going to remove this dollar sign here. And we want it means does not equal empty. And we want to do the same for the other rule too. So clicking OK, clicking edit that rule. Again, removing the dollar sign here does not equal empty. So we'll set that and apply that. Click OK, then apply. We see that that only applies to those rows that contain the value. That's exactly what we want. And now that we have our screen somewhat set up, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding our button set. So let's merge and center this. We'll add some shapes to start out. We'll just use our basic shapes here. So oval and we're going to be adding about three buttons and then two navigations. So we'll take this as our button and I'm going to use this one here. That's a good start for our button and then maybe just a different fill color. So let's add a little bit darker fill according to our theme here. I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to format this one here, size and properties here. And I want to make sure that we have a little less space for the text, right? Or more space for the text, less space around the button. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the text options here inside the text. We're going to go into the right margin. I'm going to make this 0 0.05. We're going to be duplicating this button, so it's a good way to get it started. We probably don't need any top margins or any uh, bottom margins on that. And we'll call this Save Payments. So I want to set this font to white here. If it's not set up, right here. And then what we'll do is we'll do Save Payment. And I want this right justified here. So we're going to right justify it. That way we have room for the icon. I'll make sure that, let's say, it's set to 0.22 and the width right around 1.2 here. That's good. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to duplicate this using Control D. I want one for the add new in which we'll place right here. And I want another one for the delete payment. So I'm going to duplicate that and that's going to be delete. So this one we're going to call this delete payment. We need to make this just slightly larger here. So we'll make this 1.3 or 1.4. That should be fine. And this one's going to be the add new buttons. OK, and we'll move that over back over where it belongs right here. And also what I want to do is I want to make sure that they're all lined up. And now we're going to add navigation. So they're all the same height. What we'll do is I'll do the control and I'll just make sure they're all in the same row and then distribute it accordingly, uh, horizontally like that. That's good. Now we've got room for the icons. OK, so we have a room. We've got our nice button set here. We do want to add some icons and of course I'm going to add the logo. So what we're going to do is insert picture and I've got some saved up. If you do want these particular icons and logo, they'll be available on our Patreon platform. 
So I'll reset the height and width to 0.2 because our button sets. And I'll make the logo a little bit bigger. So I'm going to take that logo right here. I'm just going to put that right here. Now we have our add new. I'm going to put that here. They're a little bit big, but no worries. Then I'm going to put our save here. And I'm going to put our particular recycle bin here. That's going to be used for the delete. I'm going to hold down the shift there and make this a little bit bigger. So we have some 0.25. We'll do that on the button sets, makes them a little larger. Holding down the control, selecting the icons, I want them all in the same line. So we're going to do that. I like the way that looks. Now, what we want to do is group them individually after we set the width just the way we want, enough room for the icon. So holding down the control, I'm going to again line them and group them. We're going to do the same thing with this one here aligning them grouping them and the last thing with delete payment will make that one a little bit larger too so we have space for the icon okay so we've got our buttons set up all here now all we need to do is the navigation so i'm going to insert another shape here but this one we're going to use the triangle shape here the arrow shape so this is going to be of course our i'm going to shape fill here Let's give it this one and then shape fill it again like that. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. We have to add some text inside there. So that's gonna be important. We need to be, it needs to be large enough for the text. This is going to be called our next button. And we do wanna set, in this case, we wanna make sure that we have enough room for the text. So again, I'm gonna go into the text options here. I zero out all the margins here. That's going to give us a little bit more room and then we will center this and then put this in the middle. So that's going to be for our next you can make it a little larger. And then all I want to do is do previous. So all I'm going to do is move this over here. I'm going to duplicate that using control D. I'm going to go into the shape format and then I'm going to rotate this and I'm going to flip it horizontal. And then we'll just change the text to previous P R E V and then period. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now what we'll do is we'll move those over here exactly where we want them aligned here. We will give this a little bit more of a height 0 0.30, just slightly more. And I like the way that that looks, make sure they're all in the line. I'm going to group these two individually. And then also I'm going to align these and make sure everything's uh, lined up vertically. And then what we do is we're going to group the entire shape. Now, after we group it, you know, we want to move, but we don't want to change the size. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the shape options here. And we want to make sure to go into the properties here and move, but don't size with the cell. So that's very important. Right, so we've got our button set up. We've got our logo set up. Let's save our work, what we've done so far. And we'll get some formats. The payment date, I want that formatted as a short date and make sure it's left justified. The payment amount, I want that an accounting. The payment type is going to be a drop down list. Now let's take a look inside our admin. I've already created something called payment types and I've already created a name range for that. So if we look inside our formulas and our name manager and we scroll all the way down here, we have something called pay types. This is using an offset formula. So it's dynamic based on this. It's going to encompass all the payment types. So that's what I want the drop down list for the payment. So if I go back into the payments in the payment types, I'm going to do data. Then we're going to do data validation and we're going to do list. Now you can use F3 to automatically select if you're not sure which one, where it is. You can do just select it from here and it's pay types and click OK and click OK. Now we've got data validation for the payment types. We can put any notes in our field here, but I want it left justified here and I want it on the top. That's what I want. Now the customer also, we've got a list of customers in our table here. I've already got a named range called customer name. So if we go into again, formula name manager and we see customer name again this is a dynamic named range for all the customer names so customer underscore names so again going inside our payments data validation here and we're going to add a new brand new data validation under list and this is going to be equals customer names clicking okay click name not names so with a single there's no s at the end of that okay so now we have that so now we can select from our customer list all right i like that we've got a payment date let's check the format on that so if we like that and we've got a payment amount here okay that formats okay so we're set up with the formats we're looking good now what we want to do is we want to take advantage of this column here i want to put some information in here so what is it that i want to put well we're just going to be using new i want to know if we're going to be loading when we're loading a payments or not and that means when I make a change to a customer, I want on a brand new from adding a brand new invoice, I want all the unpaid customer invoices to show up here. However, when we load an existing payment that we previously created, I do want to load all the ones that were paid before. So basically we're making a change to customer on a few different times, right? And I want to differentiate between those. We're also going to be making a change here. So I want to differentiate between when we're loading a previous payment or we're creating a new one. So we just need a cell to tell us if we're different. So what we're gonna call this is called payment load. And this is gonna be a true or false. We'll put it as false for now. 
And also what I want to know is I want to know the payment ID. Each individual payment has its own ID. And I want to know what row that is associated, payment row. And I also want to know the next payment ID. And what we we'll do is we we'll give those distinct color. Those two columns would be hidden so user and users wouldn't see it. And we'll give it a border. Okay, so now what is a payment ID? If we go into the formulas, name manager, and we look all under here, I've created something called pay ID. If I tab over that, we see that it is, again, another offset dynamic named range based on all the payment IDs. So as it grows, what I need to know is what row is associated with payment ID. Notice the first one starts on row four. That's what I want. So if we've selected payment ID one, what row is it on? So we're going to use index match. So we're going to actually just use match for that with an error. So equals if error, error catching. We're going to match it. So what am I matching? I'm looking up the payment ID. And what am I looking at under pay ID? That's the named range I just showed you. We want an exact match. If it's found, what I want to do is I want to add three to it because I want the row associated with it. If it's not found, I just want to use an empty. It's going to create an error. So that's it for. And I also want to know the next one. So what is the next one as we add new ones? So again, equals if error. I also want to error trap that. This time we're going to use the max formula and then we're going to use pay ID. And I want the next one, so we're going to do plus one. If there is no data at all, it could create an error. Of course, it will. It can't find it. So what do I want to do? I want to set the default to one. That means if there's no data, the first one's going to be one. All right, good. I like that. Let's go ahead and left justify that. That's it for the column. So it's relatively simple on that. Okay, so what do I want to happen? Well, if there's an invoice that's located here and they select apply, what I want to do is I want to take whatever the balance is and I want to move it and I want to copy it to the applied amount. I want to assume that the payment amount, the applied amount, is going to be the same as the balance. It may not be. Of course, they can change it, but I want to make that assumption. But to do that, I want a check mark to appear here. Now, how do I get a check mark? Well, the best thing to do, if we go to insert and we take a look inside our symbol, I want this check mark to appear. How do I get this check mark? Well, I know it's a Wingdings font and I know it's character 252. If we zoom in on that, we see Wingdings. 252, but I want to use VBA to create that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is format this entire column as wingdings. So I'm going to hold down the shift, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to home, and I'm just going to select wingdings. So I want that entire column to be the wingdings. Next up, inside VBA, when do I want it to happen? Well, when I make a selection change, that's exactly when I want the change to happen. If there's a checkbox there, I want to clear it. If there's no checkbox, I want to add it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the developer, Alt F11 is a shortcut to get you there. And we're going to go into the Visual Basic, and this is the sample that's been created, so we don't need to focus on that. This is the one we're going to look at. The sheet is called Payments, so this is the payment sheet. Here's our sample one, but here's the payments. This one's the one you're going to get. Again, it's going to be a selection change, so I'm going to go up here. I'm going to select Worksheet, and the selection change is the first one that came up. Now, when the user makes that selection change, what do we want to happen? Well, the first thing is, if they make a selection change on a, more than one cell, I want it to exit the sub. So if target count large is greater than one, meaning they select more than one cell, then, then exit sub. This is a good way to prevent errors. Okay, so if they make a selection, if not intersect, target, range, what is the range that they're going to be selecting? Well, it's starting at D11. So let's put in D11 through D, and then let's put a large number, 99. I'll put an even larger number, nothing, if they make a selection. And I also want to make sure that there's actually a value. So that means a date in range E. So I want to make sure there's a date and range E, which is the date column, and the target row dot value does not equal empty, meaning there must be a date as well, then I want something to happen, right? So if we take a look inside here, when I make a selection on D, I want to make sure there's actually a date or something here before I do that. So what do I want to happen? Well, basically, if the target value, if equals empty, nothing there, then the target dot value equals character 252. That's the check marks else clear the else then there's already the checkbox there then we want to clear the cell right so else target dot clear contents then i want to select something else i just want to select another cell so that way the selection change is not so what we'll do is we'll use f3 as that selection so we're going to select f3 range f3 dot select okay so what that's going to do is automatically put that checkbox here when i make that selection here Let's reset that code here. There we go. Okay, so now when I make a selection change, that checkbox is gonna appear. I do wanna center that inside that column there. 
So we'll take that and then we'll go to home and then we'll center that. And the reason we select something else is because I can make a selection change to the same cell in just one click. That's why VBA selects something else. And it doesn't happen on here because there's nothing in column E. That's exactly what I want. Now we're gonna add more code here. Once we, we also want the balance here applied to here if there's a balance here, so let's just say there's a balance here, I want to put that amount in amount applied. Now, invoice amount, previous paints, balance, those are all currency or amount fields. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that. Okay, so now we have balance amount applied. So we've applied that dollar sign format. We're using the accounting format in this case to those fields. So what do I want to happen when I make a selection here? If there's a checkbox, then I want to take whatever the balance is and I want to put it to amount applied. So let's do that right now if the target dot value equals character 252 which is that checkbox then what do i want to do i want to take whatever balance is there then whatever balance is located in column here i and i want to place it in column j then range j and the target dot row dot value equals range i and the target dot row dot value else what if not let's say it's clear then i want to clear it out else range j oops range j and the target dot row dot clear content okay so let's take a look at that and that's probably what i want to do so if i unselect here nothing happens if i select here the 454 if i unselect it it gets cleared out that's exactly what i want to happen so we're either applying or removing it based on that check mark okay good so that's basically what i want to happen with that selection character so it automatically gets cleared out if we're putting something in and of course the dates are going to be here not in df so what do i want to happen well if we're adding a new what i want when i select a customer i want all of those customer invoices unpaid to appear here inside here and we can do that so that's the first macro we're going to run i want to load those customer only on new right it has to be new if it's an existing one we're going to load any existing payments so assuming that payment row is not when we add new payment row is going to be empty there's no payment associated i want to load all the unpaid invoices for doors i want to load them right in here so let's take a look at that and see how we do that also in vba now i've got a module called payment macros here and i've got just a bunch of empty macros that we're going to be creating and i've created some variables dimensions and variables to help move things a, a little bit faster last row is long last result row payment row the pay column the result row the last payment last payment id and the payment database row so we're going to go into those and so what basically the first one we want to do is just basically load those open invoices how do we know that well if we look inside our invoice list here we have an invoice list here a list of all the invoices and the last column is balance so we've created a formula every time we add a brand new invoice we get that so if i go into here and i create a brand new invoice and i select our favorite customer dolores here and then I save that, but I also add some items here. Let's add a date and some items here. And so we automatically are going to create that invoice. So we're going to save it. So that brand new invoice, save and update. If we look inside that invoice list, that invoice just got created here, invoice number 11. So we see that's invoice number 11 here. And so we have that balance of 465. We know there's a balance. So basically, I want this anytime, any customer for Dolores and any balance, and I want it to appear here. So I want to use advanced filter. And I want that customer and the balance above zero. Then what I want to do is I want to have those results appear here. And I want to bring all those results into our payments here. Okay, so the first thing is what I want to know is we need some criteria for that advanced filter, meaning we only want those invoices for Dolores. So how do we have that? Well, you see this is G3. So if we look inside our invoice list, list of invoices, we've got our criteria. And this is automatically equal to F3. Actually, F3, it's a merge cell, right? So if we take a look here, both call them F and G. So it's really F. F3. F3 is what we want to link it to. So back inside the invoice list. So that's automatically. So as I change this, so does that particular criteria for that customer inside the invoice list. So notice it changed to Jackie. So it's, so it's connected and it's linked, which is going to make things a lot easier. We don't need to have VBA do that for us. Next up, I also want to know anything above zero, right? I'm only focused on those invoices that have been unpaid. And now the reason we want to do this is because most time, if you're paying a bill, right, we may want to pay more than one invoice at one time. We may want to pay only partial invoices. And that's why this is really important. If 
we only have one payment per invoice, we can put another column here and call it payment and just put a payment down here. But what if the customer is paying for more than one invoice at a time? What if the customer only pays half of the invoice or they pay partial invoices? Then we need a separate table of all the payments. That's why we have it here, all the payments. So Dolores makes a single payment of 1500. That particular payment then gets applied to multiple invoices. And those invoices are attached to this payment item list. So Dolores, notice this is pay ID one. So Dolores here made a single payment, both applied, one applied to invoice number two, one applied to invoice number five. So if we look in our payment list, we see that Dolores Richmond amount 47.45. So this is the entire payment amount, pay ID one, it got applied to two different invoices. And that's why that's really important because we're able to apply a single payment to multiple invoices or even partial invoices. That's what we wanna do. So to do that, I must know all of those unpaid invoices for Dolores and put those right here. Now, what we want to do is we want to have the same columns as we do in this. So when I bring this results data over, I want it to have it the same column. So I want to have the invoice date. I want to have the invoice number, the invoice amount, any previous payments, the balance or the amount applied. So, but let's take a look at previous payments. Now, previous payments here, as we know, they all come from our payment items. So Dolores made two payments here. She made two payments here. So these are all the previous payments, but I want to know previous payments based on a single invoice. So take a look at this. This is invoice ID two. She made three different payments, one for 1502, one for 100 and one for 50. So what I want to do is I want to know all of the payments for invoice number two, and I want to sum those up. So the best way to do that is to use a sum if formula because I need to know, and that's what we're going to have here. So this is our previous payments here. And so the best way to do that is to use some named ranges. So if we look inside the payment, I've created some named ranges that are going to help us sum those payment items. So we're going to look into the formulas, name manager, and we're going to go down here and we're going to look for pay item ID. So we're going to have a few of us. So we have pay item customer, we have pay item amount, and we have pay item invoice ID. So let's look at pay item amount. So that's the named range based on the amount that they paid. This is a pay item based on the customer. This is a pay item based on the D, the pay ID. And this is a one called based on the invoice. So if I want to sum all of the payments made by a single invoice, I'm going to use sum if to do that. And I'm going to place that formula right here. So I'm going to have a formula here. This is the formula here. Actually, the particular total payments here is inside the balance here. For taking a look at the balance here, this formula gets created every time we create a brand new invoice. So if there's an error, so what I want to know is the total invoice amount, H3, minus sum if pay item invoice ID. So anything for that invoice ID, this is the range invoice ID. What is the criteria? That criteria is what's in A3, and that is that invoice ID there. So we're totaling up all the pay items, totaling up all the amounts based on that specific ID. So we're going to track all the payments. And this is how you have an accurate balance. So the balance is basically the total amount of invoice minus the total number of payments for that specific invoice. So that's as we create that balance. And this is what we create. So we have this total invoice here. So we can create that automatically so we know the total here based on the balance here. So if they've made payments, we can add that here. So the results are invoice date, invoice ID, total here, so we know the total, payments, how many previous payments they've made, and then the balance accordingly. So that way we can get that. So we see that on invoice number two, there have been a total of 1,652 payments, the total is 653, and there's a balance of $1 on that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring all that information over and I'm gonna bring it directly into the payments here in the same date, invoice date. So all of this information is gonna be added here, bringing that in here, so I know the total, and then, I want, then we can put the amount applied here. So let's take a look how we would do that inside VBA. So the first thing we want to do inside of here is I wanna clear out anything that was here before. So all starting it with D11 here, and going actually what we're going to do is we're going to put some information in here in C11. So I'm going to clear out column C as well. I'm going to bring it all the way over to J. So from C to J, we're going to clear that out. So our sheet's called payments. So payments range C11 all the way through J and a large row, 99. And we're going to clear that out, dot clear contents. Okay, so once I clear that out, I also want to make sure, let's just put in clear any previous data. So that's what we're going to be doing on there. 
Now what I want to do is I want to set payments to true to load. Remember we're loading those payments. We put that in B2 payments dot range. That's going to be in B2. We're setting that to true dot value equals true. So set payment load to true. Okay. I also want to set it to false at the very end. So we can simply copy this, paste it down here and change this value to false. So when we make changes, we want to make sure it goes to true. And then before the end, we're going to set it to false. Now, most of the work we're going to be doing is on that invoice list. So with invoice list, okay, that's the sheet that we're going to be focused on. I want to determine the last row. So what is that last row? The last row is simply equal to range and a99 and XL up row. That's going to give us our last row. Okay. What if the last row is less than four? Then we have no data. So the last row is less than four. Then we're going to exit the sub. Nothing else we can do. Assuming that we do have data, we're going to run an advanced filter. Now that advanced filter is going to be based on the range. So if we take a look inside our invoice list, our results have an empty column. Notice that, but why does our results have an empty column? And that is because this column doesn't exist. If we look in here, we see we have previous payments. Well, this is calculated. Our previous payments are calculated. So when we have, so we don't have that, right? Because we don't have a previous payments inside our invoice list. So we're leaving it blank, blank. It's simply calculated. Our previous payments are basically our total minus R3 total minus the balance, right? So that's all we need to do minus T3, simply the balance. Okay. So we know the total invoice minus the balance. So we know how many total payments they've paid, but this isn't part of our original data. So when we have results that are not part of our original data, we need to include a blank column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set an advanced filter. Our original data is going to be A2 all the way through K2. I'm including K2 because our results also include a blank header row. So we're going to do that A2. Here's A2 all the way through K2. So that's our original. So we want A2 all the way through K2. Now our criteria, what's our criteria is going to be automated. We already have set that up. It's going to be from L2 all the way through M3. So L2 through M3, that's right here. L2 through M3. Now, where do we want those results to go? I want those results to go here from P2 all the way through T2, P2 through U2 or T2 in this case. How do we do that? We just simply update that P2. And also I use auto hotkey that automates this code for me. It helps it's free software. Okay. And we'll just make this T2. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to determine what's the last row of our results. So the last row of our results, we're not going to base it on column A. We're going to base it on column P because that's the required field. So what is the last row here? P99. That's going to be the last row of our results when they come in. What if the last results row are less than three? Then we want to exit the sub out. So if our last results low are less than three, we're going to exit the sub. Actually, we can probably not exit the sub. Let's go. Let's just move this down here. So, right. I don't want to make B2 true until we, we have data. So that's fine. So we're going to move that down there. Okay. That means B2 doesn't go to true until we actually make changes. That's fine. Now that we have data, I want to actually create that formula. So if we notice here, this is our total payments formula. Our total payments form is located up here. It's basically our total invoice minus the total balance. And we know how many total payments they've made. So knowing that all we need to do is just bring down this formula, all the data. Now that we know the last row, in this case, it's six, I'm going to bring this formula down in one line of code. It's stored in S one. So to do that, we're going to do dot range S three, which is our first line through S and our last result row dot formula equals dot range S one S one formula. And this is our total payments formula. Okay. So now that we got our total payments formula located in here, I also want to bring over the data. So we've got all the data here. So it's going to be in our payments. So let's take a look here. So I'm ready to bring over the data starting from P all the way through T and I'm going to bring it directly over inside our payments from E, which is our invoice date all the way through I. So let's bring that data over using this payments dot range E 11, which is our first column E 11, our first row, all the way through I and our last result row. Now notice that our first row here starts in row 11, but our data here starts in row three. So we need to compensate our results start in row three. So we need to compensate for that difference by adding eight plus eight dot value equals or is our results data range. It's located in P three all the way through T through T and the last result row dot 
value. Okay, that's gonna bring over all the data. Okay, we're gonna set B2 to false. That is gonna be it. I'm going to just clear the spaces out. We're gonna check it. And so when do we want this to happen? I wanna load payments when the user makes a change. So I'm gonna save our results. When do we wanna happen? We want that to happen on change of F3, but only when the user makes a change. First of all, I wanna make sure this is not blank. When they make a change to F3, and I also wanna make sure that the payment row is empty. So that's gonna be a change event on the sheet. So we're gonna go back into the payments here, and we're gonna focus on the change event. So that's here, if we look under change event, so we make a change event. Now, what kind of change event? So first of all, I want to make sure that there's a value in here. So let's take a look at this. Put some notes here. On customer change, but not on payment load. Now, when we're loading an existing payment, not on payment load. And only, let's put, and only on new payments. Okay, so if not intersection, so what, which one we're gonna make the change, of course, that change is going to be to F3. And we want some conditions on that. So the conditions are, and range B2 must be false. That's of course the payment load. And what, I also wanna make sure that B4 equals empty. Range B4, which is our row, dot value equals empty. And the reason is that is that's gonna be a new transaction. Then what? Then we're going to do something. Then I want to simply load in the payment options. Actually, we don't need the F in because it's just a single line, right? If we're doing more actions, then we can add more in here. We don't need the end if all we need to do is just attach, paste in that particular macro here. So that's all we're going to be doing. Again, saving our work. So that's all we need to do. We'll check for anything else. So we're gonna make sure, again, B4 is empty. And we wanna make sure that, of course, actually one more thing, I wanna make sure that F3 is not empty. So let's do range. So that means well, range F3 dot value does not equal empty. Okay, so that means there's actually a customer, right? If they clear it out, nothing's gonna happen. Okay, so let's go in down here and double clicking here and we're gonna load it. Okay, let's take a look. So it cleared it all out, which is what I want. Now we see invoice date, we've got the invoice number here. I'm gonna go ahead and center that here, go to home and center that. We've got invoice amount, we've got previous payments, we've got balance, good, I like that. So now when I make a selection change here, we see that we're applying the balance. Okay, good, I like that. But what I want is I wanna know that total applied. How many are being applied? Well, basically I'm gonna do a sum if. I want not just sum everything in here, but I wanna make sure that it's checked. Now we could do, probably could do equal sum, that's fine. We could just simply sum the column. We could also sum it by check marks, but almost generally it's always the same. What I mean is, are we only checking those that are checked? And we can do that too. So there's two ways we can do it. We can simply sum the column, which is relatively easy, or we can do a sum if. So if we do sum if, I wanna base it only on those check columns. So what is the range? That range that we're gonna be focusing on is apply here. So that means only those checked are going to be applied. So that's an easy way to skip it. So now, what is the criteria? It's basically character 252. Only then are we going to sum it. So that's another way to do that. So that means when we unselect something, automatically it gets unselected. Of course, it gets cleared out automatically, but our total applied also goes. So that's another way of doing it. I'm gonna italicize that. I'm gonna left justify that. So, this, so now we have the total applied, which is nice. And this way we can do that. Okay, so this is looking really good. Now, I like the way that that looks. We're gonna save our work. So our first macro is done. We're loading the customer in and we're only loading in our new. Now what I'm going to do is we need to save this payment. I wanna save it. I wanna make those changes and save everything accordingly. So how are we going to do that? Okay, so the first thing what I want to do is I want to make sure that we understand has it been saved before or not. So in other words, payment row, if there's a row, we know it's been saved before. If there's no row, it has not yet been saved. So that's gonna be our differentiator. And I'm also gonna make adjustment. I think I'm gonna put the column. I also wanna know if it's saved, where's that, that row that it's located in? What do I mean by that? Notice these payment items have already been saved here. There's a row associated with that. I wanna place that row directly inside here and I want it hidden here. So actually I'm gonna clear out, instead of C, I'm gonna clear out K, I'm gonna use that. I'm just gonna make that adjustment here. Inside our macros, I want to clear out, let's say D, right, and K. So basically I wanna put that in here. So when we clear it out, we're gonna use previous data. I wanna put the column associated. And that way I know if there's a value here, this has already been saved and there's a database row inside the payment items that's associated with that. So let's go ahead and write the macro that we're going to save it. Now, when I save it, we need to make sure that there's a payment date. 
I need to make sure that there's a payment amount, that there's a customer. Payment type and notes may not be required. And I also need to make sure that the payment amount is equal to the total applied. If there's a difference, we need to let the user know. So that's the next macro we're going to write called payments save and update. We're using the same macro for both us saving new ones and updating existing ones. So the first thing we want to do is check to make sure that we have some value. So check for those required fields. We're going to focus on with payments. And I always like to add a dot to make sure I got the sheet right. IntelliSense pops up. I'm going to check for required fields making sure that those values so if f3 j3 or j5 are empty then we need to let the user know again f3 j3 or j5 if those are empty letting you know they need to make sure that there's values here so if dot range f3 dot value equals empty or so we're going to put the or now we can just copy this and change it to j3 and j5 so copy that then do something else so f3 j3 or J5 here, we need to let the user know to make sure those fields are out. We can do that with a message box. Please make sure to add in a customer. We need to have a payment date and payment amount before saving. Okay, and we're gonna exit the sub. If they don't have those required fields, we're gonna exit. Next up, I wanna check to make sure, check to make sure payment amount equals applied amount. And so our payment amount is located in J5. Our applied amount is located right here inside J9. So I must make sure that J5 and J9 is equal. If dot range J5 dot value does not equal dot range J9 value, then let the user know with the message message box. Please make sure payment amount is equal to applied amount. And then we're gonna exit this up. Next up, now we know everything's accurate, ready to save it. Now what I wanna do is I wanna know if we have a new one, if we're dealing with a new payment or an existing payment. So we can do that here. How do we know that? It's gonna be based on B4, if dot range. B4 dot value, B4 is the row, equals empty. We can do empty or double quotes, either one will work. Then it's a new payment, else, and if it's an existing payment, so else it's an existing payment. There's some things we want to do for the new payment. If you've seen my videos before, you're familiar with this. That repetition is certainly going to help you and make these a lot faster. So if it's a new payment, we need to determine the payment ID. The next payment ID is located here. I'm going to place that directly in B3. I also want to take that payment ID and I'll put it directly inside the first available row located in column A. So that's exactly what we are going to do right here. Okay, so the first thing, the first row, we'll call this pay row, that's a long variable, is equal to payment list the first available row. So it's gonna be range XL. So that's gonna be our first available row plus one. That is our first row that's available. Call it first available row. Okay, so once we have that, I wanna take that payment ID, that brand new payment ID from B5 and put it directly into B3. Value equals dot range B5. That is our, call it next payment ID. I also wanna take that next payment ID. I wanna put it directly inside our payment list and the associated pay row. So and pay row dot value equals whatever's in B3. So that's gonna be also that pay ID and we're gonna place that directly in here. Okay, so that's it. If it's an existing, all we need to do is just take whatever's in B4 and that is going to be our payment row. It's gonna be located there. So existing, we're going to do pay row equals B4. Very good. So now everything else is going to be used just for regardless if it's a new or an existing. Now notice I've got some data mapping here. Basically I've mapped pay date to J3, customer to F3, pay type to F5, J5. So using this I can then basically loop from column two to what is the last column here. You see column F is column six. So from two to six we're simply going to map that data there. So we can do that for the column, pay column, for pay column is equal to two, because we already have column one, two, in this case, six, okay, and then next pay column. Okay, so inside that column, what I'm going to do is simply map the data. So the payment list dot cells, we're using cells because both the row and the column are dynamic here, that pay row, comma, pay column dot value is equal to what? It's equal to dot range. Now, where's that range located? It's located in row one, so payment list dot cells row one based on the pay column 
dot value right here this is the range like j3 f3 and so on and so forth dot value so this is going to be save form data so we're just going to save it in that so that's it so one loop that's data mapping that's going to cover all that so that's all we have to save or update the data okay once we have that now what we need to do is save or update those pay items so all we've done up to so far let's go ahead and put some notes in here so now we're ready to save the pay items so save pay items so all we've done here is pretty much save any data located up here so these fields right here and i've made sure that we're saving them into this payment list here either updating the existing or saving them so now what i want to do is i want to go through the payment items so that means i want to save all of these payment items to another database and the reason is, is because we have one to many that's why we have two different databases one for this and one for this and the reason is because we don't know how many pay items so there's unlimited we can't have unlimited columns in this so we create a secondary database we make sure that they're tied by the payment id that is why we create this payment id because i need to know how many items are associated with payment id one so that means i know that two items are associated with pay id one just like that and that creates a one payment list too many payment items, one too many. We use two different databases to do that. And so what I want to do is I want to determine the last row, in this case 15. I'm going to loop through them from 11 through 15. I'm going to look to see if it's been previously saved. That database row will be located here in column K. If it has not been saved, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to save it to the first available row here. I'm going to put in the payment ID. I'm going to put in the invoice, customer, payday, payment on, and then the row associated with this. Now the pay ID in the row, those are only for brand new items so we can add those into new items so the first thing we need to do is determine the last row so the last pay item row now we have that variable up here called last pay item row this is the one that we're going to use so that last payment item is going to be based on column e that's the date column last pay item okay so now that we have that we're going to then move forward we can simply run a loop for the pay item row equals 11 to the last pay item row and we're going to close our loop next pay item row okay inside this this is where we're going to check the first thing what i want to do is i want to check to see if it's been applied right i really only want to focus on those particular payments that have been applied with that check mark so the first thing i want to do is only those items with a check mark so to check to see if column d equals if dot range what is the column d d and the pay item row dot value equals character 252 only then are we going to move forward 252 okay then continue on okay so we're only focused on those rows that contain that selected applied checkbox okay so within that row now what i want to do is i want to determine if it's been saved before if so we can do if if dot range k and the pay item row dot value equals empty then we know it has not been saved else previously saved okay but if it's not been saved again what we want to do is do a few things determine the first row and so on and so forth so this is going to be a brand new pay item a new pay item row when we have a new pay item row we want to make sure that we get the first available row so the pay item database row that's the row that says it equals the first available row here plus one that's the first available pay item row once we have that row what i want to do is i want to put that id inside column a so that's really important actually we need to put this to the database in here pay so what is that name of that pay item list if we take a look inside here pay items it's called pay items so that's the particular database we want to use so we want to assign that so there we go pay items okay so once we have that we want to put that id inside column a so pay items and the pay item database row dot value is going to equal what where is that located it's located right here in b3 i want to put that payment id i want to put that directly inside b3 so dot range b3 dot value that's the payment id once we have that payment id what else do i want to do well i want to also set that database row where is it located here that's only going to be for brand new ones so f now f is going to take on the this particular formula and that's important because once we delete that if we delete it then we're still going to have the correct row so we're going to put in a formula and that's going to go into column f so i'm simply going to copy this here i'm going to change the column to f and i'll put in that formula so equals and then we'll put in the quotations equals and then row okay good we'll call that our item row formula 
All right, so that's sufficient enough. Now, what if it's been previously saved? If it's been previously saved, we can simply extract that row from column K. So our pay item database rows equal to whatever's in column K, existing pay item row. Now, one more thing, if it's a brand new one, I wanna take that row and I'll put it directly inside here. If it's a brand new one, we need to add that in. So simply here, we're going to take our dot range K, equals what is it going to equal it's simply equal to that pay item database row what i'm doing here is i'm brand new item i'm placing that database row located in column a knowing that it's been saved and of course we're going to be able to hide that too and i'll show you how to do that so k in the item is going to be taken on put database row okay good i like that that looks good that's just the way i want to have it now what else do we need to do we need to save the remaining information so saving the information regardless if it is new or an existing so how are we going to do that well we can do pay items dot range b is the first column what's it going to be and the pay item database row dot value is going to be equal what's going in column b well let's take a quick look inside column b of our pay items we have our invoice id and where's our invoice id coming from it's coming from column f so equals here and we can just copy this here and change that to f so this is going to be our invoice id okay very good so that's going to go in column b but we, we've got a few left so let's copy them and then we have column c column d and column e so we can change those to c d and e so what's going to go inside column c if we take a look we see that the customer is going in column c and the pay date is going in column d so we know that those are so those are going to come directly from here our customer is going to be in f3 so we can update that to f3 and so this is our customer and then we also have after our customer we have our let's say in column d we have a pay date and then pay amount after that so let's update that inside the code pay date and then pay amount so the amount where is that going to come from the amount that you pay is going to be applied to now that applied is going to come directly from column j so we're going to put in column j right here the amount and the pay date is going to be fixed based on the range so we can we can remove this so it's going to be f three and that's exactly where our customer is coming from and our pay date where is our pay date located our pay date is located right here inside j3 so we have f3 for our customer j3 for our pay date all right so let's put that in here so j3 okay good so now we've got everything going up i like the way that looks it's pretty much finished on that we're going to make sure as we loop so we're simply going to loop through every row making sure that they are selected having that checkbox here making sure let's go ahead and put that selected row and make sure it is selected and then we can continue on okay so let's go ahead and save our work and now what we want to do is reset this i want to take this particular macro and i'm going to assign it to the button that we've associated with that save so not only to the button but the icon as well i'm going to hold down the control i'm going to right click and then assign macro and i'm going to paste that in here save or update okay i'm going to go ahead and save it again once again and i'm just going to click save payment and then please make sure the payment amount is equal to okay that's good that's working good so we're going to change that to 61.88 we want to make sure that they're equal i'm going to clear the date making sure that it, we do have required fields it says please make sure to add in a customer payment date good that's what i like making sure that payment date is required saving that payment our rows got assigned 10 11 and 12 that's what i want only for those rows that got payment taking a look inside our payment list our new payment date here cash we've got our notes here perfect and our pay type here going to our payment items here 10 11 and 12 our pay id is five our invoice id of 289 same customer here date here invoice everything looks exactly the way i want it very very good okay so that worked out good that customer now what i like to do is hide these i don't want to see these numbers here what we'll do is we're just going to give them a particular format so i'm going to hold down the shift here it's going to go all the way to the end and what we're going to do is going to go to home instead of general we're going to go to more number formats and if it's numbers we're just going to go to custom and we can use two or even three semicolons two is sufficient for only numbers and that's going to give it the height of now when i select on it we see that it's still here inside it but it's just invisible so that's a great way to go ahead and hide things that you don't want to see now we can save this payments now what i like to do is i want to click add new and i basically want to clear all this information out so that's just going to be two lines of code so pay save and update so add new so what are we going to do with add new simply just clear out a bunch of fields so it's going to be payments dot range and what do i want to clear out i want to clear out b3 that is of course our 
payment ID, we want to clear that out. I want to clear out F3, which is our customer, through G3. That's our customer name. It's a merge cell. I also want to clear out J3. That's our payment date. And I want to clear out F5 through G5. That is our payment type. And then J5 is our amount. And then also I want to clear out F7 through, that's our notes, F7 through J8. F, so all those need to be cleared. And then also the table below. So the table below is, starts at D11 all the way through K and we'll just do a large row. Okay, dot clear content. Okay, so we're clearing fields. And I also want to do, so that's pretty much if the add new. And also, let's, why don't we set the default date? So once we clear out all these fields, I'm just going to set the default date. J3, we're going to set it up as a date. So payments dot range J3, it's more of a convenience thing, dot value equals the date. Set default date. Okay, good. So that's it. That's it for add new. I'm going to copy that macro. We're going to go back in here. And again, selecting on the button and the icon itself, right-clicking, assign the macro or clicking N, pasting that in here, clicking OK. Okay, saving our work, especially when we use clear contents, we always want to save our work because we never know what could happen and go wrong. Clicking Add New, clicking out, we got our default date, January 5th, 2023. Happy New Year, everyone. Payment type, payment amount, payment notes, everything got cleared out. Good, that's just the way I like it. Total apply. Now what we want to do is, why don't we load the payment in? When I click previous or next, I want to load the previous one. And we also need to delete it, but we don't have a payment to delete here. So let's focus on loading the payment. And that means when we have a payment ID, let's say I have a payment ID one, I want to load that payment ID automatically in. So let's do that. It's going to be called payment load, so payment load. So that's the macro we're going to right here. Now with that payment load, we're going to focus on the payments with payments. We want to make sure if we don't have a row associated with that, we can't load it in. So first thing we want to do is make sure the B4 contains a value. If dot range B4 dot value equals empty, then what do we want to do with a message box? Please make sure to select a correct payment exit the sub that's important okay so we're going to set that pay row or equal to the range b4 is our payment row that's very important payment row now once we have that we can then just also i want to clear everything out i'm going to copy this here i'm going to clear everything out except b3 b3 is that id that's important so everything else out except b3 okay so after i've cleared out to make sure that we've cleared all the fields I want to load the information in. So I want to load it from the database. We know the row and we know the columns. So we can do that. Now we're going to set that pay column, that same loop. We're just, remember that we created this loop. I'm basically going to do the opposite. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it down here. But the opposite is what? The opposite is bringing information from the database into the field. So I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to take the equals and I'm going to bring it right over here. Now we're going to load from database. Okay, so that's it. So that's all we need to do. Everything else is the same. Range payment list, the first column, this is our range where it's coming using data mapping. It's gonna come directly from the payroll. And the pay column is simply looping. I know I'm moving fast, but it's a lot to cover. So that's all we're gonna do is just reversing what we did before. So now what we wanna do again is load those pay items. Load pay items. Okay, so now what I want to do is I wanna look at the pay items and I wanna look at every single pay item that was associated with a specific pay ID. So I want to run an advanced filter, and I, how do I know what ID? We're going to link this to payments B3. We see that whenever we change it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to load them all in. But I don't want all the information. What do I want? I want to know the invoice date. I want to know some information here, but I want to bring all this information in. As we see, there's our payment items only save some data. It saves the customer, which we don't need, the invoice ID, which we do need, the pay date, which we don't need the pay amount. So basically the invoice ID is the most important thing. I'm gonna bring that and of course the pay amount. So I'm gonna bring the invoice ID and the pay amount, but I need more than just that. What else do I need? I need the invoice date. I need the invoice amount, the original invoice amount, but that original invoice amount has not been saved. Purposely, it's not saved in payment items because I wanted to look it up. I wanna look up, maybe the invoices have changed, so I wanna look up the invoice amount using a formula. I wanna look up the previous payments using a formula. I don't wanna look up the balance using a formula, but I need it in this order and whether it's applied. So here, notice this particular is the checkbox. If we change that font to Wingdings, you will see that that's the checkbox. So, and I automatically wanna put that applied because we're loading previous ones. So everything that we load is automatically going to be applied. To do that, we're gonna 
have to use formulas. So all I need is the invoice ID. Once I have the invoice ID, I can look up the invoice date, I can look up the invoice amount, and I can look up the previous payments or formulate that. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do that with some named ranges. So once we know the ID, I'm going to put that first ID right here. Basically, I'm going to run an advanced filter. I'm going to extract the invoice ID for payment number one, in case it's pay ID one. And I also want to know the amount. So just those two items are coming and the row that's associated. So our advanced filter is only going to bring in this, this, and this. Then I'm going to determine the last row. Then I'm going to take the formulas that I've already saved up here. Here's our saved formulas. I'm going to bring those formulas here and here bringing those formulas down. Then I'm going to take all of this data here and I'm going to bring it directly over inside the payment system and put it right inside here. So that's exactly what we're going to do inside that. So let's take a look at some of these formulas. This is simply character 252. That's all it is. That just shows that's going to bring it down. This is our invoice date. So of course, I've got a named range called invoice date and I'm going to match the invoice number. I'm going to look up whatever's in 04 and I'm going to match it running match. And I want, of course, the single column. I want to return the date that's associated with this invoice. And of course, this is the same date. This is a date, right? It's just a different format. We don't necessarily need it in date format here, but we do want it in date format here. So that's important. So that's all we need to do there. Then also I want to do the invoice amount. So again, we're going to index our name range called invoice amount using the same match. Previous payments, again, a formula. This is we're using sum if I want to know all of the pay item invoice ID. I want to know all of the items, 04, all the amounts of the pay items. In this case, we're using this particular pay items amount for the amount. And we're going to bring all that in. So I want to know all the amounts that are associated with the invoice ID located here. So once I have that, then I want to then move forward. And to do that, we can have the amount applied. Now, the balance is simply, of course, our invoice amount minus the previous payment. So bringing down these formulas is going to get it. So let's go ahead and, and write that up within our load pay item. So the first thing what we want to do is we want to clear any prior results. So we're going to focus just on this sheet. So with pay items, that's the sheet I want to focus on. First thing I want to do is clear any previous data. So dot range. And where's that data located? Let's take a look inside here. And it's going to be M4 all the way through T and down. So I'm going to clear any previous data. M4 through T and then a large row dot clear content. Clear any previous results. Now the formulas are of course in row one and those don't get cleared out. Once we've done that, we're going to determine the last row, the last row of data here. And then if the last row is less than four, we're going to exit the sub. So last row is less than four. That's correct. We're ready to run our advanced filter now. So our advanced filter is going to be located here. Again, we're using, again, we're using blank rows. I need to make sure that we go all the way to column G because our results are, many of them are blank. So we need to include blank. So we need to go from A3 all the way through G. So our advanced filter is going to be doing just that, A3 through G. Where is our criteria? I'm going to bring this down so we can see both here. Our criteria is located in J2 through J3. So that's what we're going to have. J2 through J3 is our criteria. Criteria is automatically with a formula based on that pay. Now results are going to come. We can bring our results all the way from O3 through T3. And that's exactly where our criteria is. I'm going to bring that criteria. Now what we want to do is determine the last row. So O3 through T is our, that's where we want the results to go. Okay, so now we need to determine the last row of the results. The last row of the results is going to be based on that date, that invoice ID, which is required, and that's going to be column O. Okay, so if there's less, if there's no data, although there should always be data in this case, it's going to, if it's less than four, then we know there's no data. So last row less than four, then we're going to exit the sub out. We know that there's no data. Okay, continuing on. So now we can bring down those formulas. So where are those formulas? We're going to do that in two lines of code. So basically, whatever formula is in M and M, I want to bring it down to all the way starting in M4 through, through N in the last row. So we can do that dot range M4 through N and the last results are last result row dot formula. We're using formula equals where? M1 through N1 equals dot range M1 through N1 dot formula. So this is going to be the apply and invoice date formula. Okay, we can copy this and then we're going to just make some changes for the next one. So the next one is going to be our invoice amount, our payment amount, and our balance. So that's going to be our P through R. So P4 through R in the last results row is simply equal to P1 through R1. And these particular formulas 
are located here. They are our invoice amount, our previous payment, and our balance. Okay, so once we have all that data over, we can then bring that information into our sheet here. So how are we going to do that? Into our payment sheet. We got everything in the right, and that's why it's really important because we've got everything in exactly the right order. So all we need to do is just simply do D11 all the way through K in the last results row plus seven, I believe. And then we're going to simply add that all in here. And I'll tell you why. Remember, our first row result starts in 11 here. Inside our pay items, our first row result starts in four. That's why we need to add seven. So we're going to do payments dot range dot D11 all the way through K and the last result row plus seven dot value equals dot range M4 through T and the last results, last result row dot value. And this is going to bring over pay items. Okay, great. Once we have that, I want to set B2, right? I want to set B2 to load and true and false. So we need to make sure that dot range B2 dot value equals false. And I also want to set it to true. Pay, payment load to false and i also want to set it to true before we bring over the data so i can just do it right here because we don't really make any change actually i make changes here up here but we also exit the sub which we shouldn't do so true right true here true setting it to true so instead of going to exit sub let's just go to no data and then we can do the same thing here anytime we exit sub and the reason i want to do this go to no data is because i want to make sure that we set b2 to false so i'm going to put no data here and we're simply going to skip everything and go there to payment load and that's going to make sure that we go to false without exiting the sub saving our work always before we run any code that's very important and then i want to basically i'm going to when do we want this to happen well we want it to happen when we make a change but let's go ahead and run it uh, let's do it manually first putting in one now we know we've got a payment row so we're going to associate it and i'm just going to run this macro here and see if there's any issues taking a look in here apply date applyment balance is zero on this taking a look okay let's take a look here under the payment items here Okay, everything looks really good. I like the way that that looks. Okay, let's start out by defining some variables inside the previous payment. So payment previous, I wanna do the dimension, the minimum, right? I wanna know the, what the minimum pay ID is. So dimension, the minimum, minimum pay ID as long. I also wanna know the pay ID as long, okay? And now I wanna know what the minimum pay ID, in case there are any pay items, what's the least, the lowest number here? So I'm gonna wrap it in on air, resume next, and on air go to zero in case it's not found. So what is it? So the minimum pay ID is equal to, we've got a named range for that, application worksheet fund, and I wanna do it using the minimum function. And what is that? It is based on the pay ID, pay ID. That's that named range of all the pay ID. I wanna know the lowest value of it. So, and if it's zero, of course, we don't have it. So the minimum application works for minimum pay ID. So we only need that. Continuing on, so if I know that minimum pay ID, we are going to then set it to, if it's zero, then we know that there's no, we're at the lowest level, right? So we, that means there's no payments. Okay, so actually I gotta put in that sheet, that's important. So it's gonna be based on the payment list, and then that payment ID, so that payment list dot range, there's the pay ID, I'll make sure that's added in there. So that's gonna be part of that. If it's zero, we know that there are no. So if the minimum pay ID equals zero, let the user know. Then what are we going to do? Simply let the user know with the message box, please create a saved payment first. So it means there, there are no payments that have been entered yet. So message box, please, please create a payment first. Exit sub, right? No payments have been created. All right, so continuing on, I also want to check and I'll set that pay ID, what, basically whatever's in B3. I don't know, we need to know the current pay ID and that's gonna be in B3. So pay ID is equal to, we'll set it B3. So I gotta do with payments, let's focus on that. With payments, that's the sheet we're focused on. And I'll bring this with down so it encompasses all the macros, so we'll make sure. So the pay ID is simply gonna equal dot range B3. Dot value. Okay, so that's the payment ID. Payment ID. The current, those current selected one. That's important. If we're doing previous, we need to know what the current one is. What if the pay ID is zero? That means they're on a new one. So if the pay ID equals zero, they're probably on a new one. Or dot range B4, that means there's no rows dot value equals empty. Then it's a new payment. So what do we do? If there's a new payment and they do previous, what do I want to do? Well, I want to set it on the last one created. So basically, 
let's just say they're on a brand new payment here and there's nothing here. When they click previous, what do we want to happen? What I'd like to see happen is I want to load the last payment that was created. So where do we find the last payment that was created? Well, we're going to base on the last row with the value here. So we know the last row of the value here is row eight and the pay ID is based on column A in that value. So we're going to load that. I'm going to take that five and I'm going to put it directly inside here in B3 and then we're going to run the macro to load the payment. So that's just what we're going to be doing inside there. So if the pay ID equals zero or before then and if. Okay, so we're going to put in load the last one created. Load last payment created. And to do that, all we need to do is determine the pay row. So the pay row is equal to on the payments, payment, list dot range a999 and xl dot row so it's the last row okay so we know the pay rows all right so we get else what if it's an existing what if it's not zero else that means they're an existing how do we find that pay row so the pay row is going to be equal to we're going to look for that pay id so the pay row is equal to the payment list i want to look for find out what row dot range I'm going to look in that pay ID, pay ID, and I want to find out what row the current one's on. So pay ID, we get another way to use it. If we know it is on, we could use find, or we simply know what row it is because it's located directly here inside B4. So we just have to put the pay row is already in dot range B4, dot range B4, dot value, pay row. So that's the current row. But I also want to set, I don't want to just set it on the row. I want to set it on the one before that dot minus one right so i want to know the row before it because we're going to previous so the payroll is going to be payroll minus one so minus one okay so we set that payment row we know that it so now what i want to do is i want to check if they're at the first row so how do i do that so if pay row equals three then we know they're at the first one or what or maybe there's no or the minimum pay id equals zero or the minimum pay id if that's the first one pay id equals whatever's located in b3 equals dot range b3 then they're at the first one basically i just want to know are they at the first one then okay so let's just put it here first payment so if they're on the first payment let the user know they can't move previous because they're already on the first one message box you are on the first payment it can't go previous exit the sub if they're not on the first payment all we need to do is determine put inside b3 dot range b3 dot value equals payment list dot range i'm gonna put that at a and whatever that pay row is and the pay row dot value set payment id and then we're going to simply load it so pay payments load i think it's payments load okay so notice how they were all in undercase and i knew that it was wrong because they stayed undercase as soon as i put the correct one they both l and the p went to uppercase and i knew it was correct so that's a good way of testing in case your macro is wrong so load payments so that's all we need to do is just simply load the payment so we're going to place that id whatever that id is that previous id we're going to look at right in here so that's all we have to do so we we'll click add new now what we're going to do is we're going to assign that so we're going to click assign macro we'll check so we're going to go all the way down here to payments and then previous and click ok so saving our work for running our macro checking for any issues that might appear up and clicking on payments and there we go so notice the payment id is five payment list five is the last one if we go to previous it should go to four three two and once we're at the last one we should get you on the first payment that's exactly what i want okay perfect so now we're going to do the next one so that pretty much looks really good so i'm just going to copy this because we're going to it's very very similar except a few differences so i'm going to take that previous payment and i'm going to let's clear out let's clear out the extra rows we don't need it make it nice and clean code okay so i'm going to copy this here and i'll make the adjustments payment next so instead of minimum right i'm going to use maximum so min so i'm going to just find it min in the selected text and replace it with max so i'm going to focus on the max so it's going to replace a few replace all based on the selected text so we're going to focus on here our maximum pay id our pay id is long and with payments okay so now what we want to do is i want to determine the maximum of the pay id determine the max. if the max pay id is zero we don't need, need to know actually there is no existing pay id so we do need to let them know to create the first payment so that's important also I want to set the pay id just as we did before inside b3 but this time what i want to know is if they're on the last payment right so load the last payment creator so again what if they're on the last payment 
And so maybe they're on a new payment or maybe there's nothing loaded. So when I click next, what do I want to happen? When I click next, but they're in the add new stage, what do I want to happen? Well, let's try the first payment that's created. So I'm going to set that pay row to three, which is the first one. So pay row in this case is going to equal three. And why is that important? Well, because if we take a look at our payment items, we see that our first one actually is in four. I'm going to put our payment list here. Our first one's in four. Let's set it to four on our first one. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set that to four. Payment row equals three. So I'm gonna set the pay row, load the payment last created. Okay, so let's go ahead and write some notes so we know exactly what we're doing here. So here's, we're gonna put on new payment. What do we want to do? Go to first, one created pay in row is simply going to be here four okay pay in row is going to be a four okay but what if it's not what if it's an existing one then i want to basically increase it now this time we're going to increase it so the pay row is simply going to be equal to the first one so here payment rows located in b4 i want to add one to that i want to go to the next one whatever's in the next one so b4 plus one is going to be the next row pay row plus one so we're going to increase it one so if pay row is three i want to know if we're on the last payment are we in the last one how do we know that so it's going to be the maximum if pay row equals the max payment then we know they're on the last one so the max pay id equals the pay id so how do we know if we're on the last payment well we already determined we already know the max pay id so we know so if the payment id equals the last one then we're on the last payment so we can update that max pay id equals pay id then we know they're on the last one you're on the last payment right they can't go last then okay then what do we want to do then we just let the user know that they're on the last payment okay can't go beyond that otherwise we're simply going to take b3 put it in and whatever's in a in the payment row we've already set that up we're going to set that payment id okay and again then what we're going to do is simply going to copy this particular macro or assign it to that next button so it's all written so we're going to right click here and then we're going to click assign macro we're going to paste that in here saving our work before we do anything else we're going to click on next we're going to add new it's going to go to that first one right if we're on nothing next 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 and we get to five it should let us know that we're on the last one you're on the last payment okay perfect last one is we want to make sure we delete a payment if we want to delete the payment not only do i need to delete the row that's associated with the payment i need to delete all of the rows that are associated here with the payment so we're going to need to run an advanced filter making sure that we get the invoice ids or at least the rows and then i want to do is i want to reverse the rows i want to know row 12 11 12 11 and 10. when i reverse order i want to make sure i delete the highest row first then the next then the next so we want to make sure we're sorting it based on rows on delete so that's going to be on delete so the first thing we want to do when we delete it is make sure the user give the user an opportunity to leave so we can just said message box delete i think i have that on automate are you sure you want to delete this let's change that to payment i've got that on auto hotkey so it makes it a lot quicker otherwise we'd be here even longer payment okay so if the user doesn't want to delete it they're going to say no then we're going to exit the sub out so continuing on i want to focus on with the payments so with payments that's going to be our start and then i want to check to make sure is it currently saved and what do i mean by that let's just say that it's not saved we know that b4 is empty if b4 is empty i don't need to that means this has never been saved all i need to do is just go to click add new and basically it's going to clear everything out so b4 is going to let us know if dot range b4 dot value equals empty then go to not saved and we're going to drop down here i always like to go not saved and then here we're just going to go to payments add new notice in lowercase if it's incorrect so notice it's incorrect but if i add the s it's correct and it's going to change to add new so that's how i know it's correct okay good so basically it's going to go add new so but what if it is saved if it is saved i need to get that pay row inside a variable that variable is going to be located called pay row and the amount value is going to be located in b4 so pay row is equal to b4 pay row obviously okay so now that we have the payment row what we want to do is delete it based on the payment list so the payment list dot range what is the range pay row and and we'll put the colon there and the pay row dot entire row dot delete okay so delete payment row okay so that part's easy but what about the items now the items i want to make sure we're deleting the items so we're going to inside we're going to focus on the pay items i need to delete all the items associated with that so with pay items and then i want to determine the last row again we need to run an advanced filter so the last 
row of those payments is based on that. So of course, if it's less than four, we're not going to exit the sub. So actually, let's take a look at three. So last rows less than, let's take a look at the pay items. Now you see that the pay items here, they start on row four. So if it's less than that, then of course we have no data. That is sufficient. We don't want to exit the sub. I'm just going to click on go to, again, not saved. Should do saved. Put that D and then also put that D. Okay, I like that. Okay, now we're ready to run our advanced filter. So to do that, we'll just write the advanced filter. And this time the range is going to be set from A3 through G. And we wanna include that blank row on that. Our criteria is gonna be that pay ID J2 through J3 here. So we're gonna set the criteria just as we did before, J2 through J3 here. Okay, so what about our results? Now the results, we don't really need much. In this case, we certainly don't need for, I really just need those rows. That's the most important part. But we can include everything from, let's say, O to T. That's sufficient for us. And then we're gonna sort them. But most of the thing, the row is important. So we'll just do, let's clear this out. O3 through T3. Okay, so now what we want to do is determine the last results row because we're gonna have to sort them. So the last results row is simply equal to based on column O. Okay, so I wanna make a few considerations here. If there's just one row of data, we can skip the sort. If there's no rows of data, then we can also skip deleting and we can go directly to uh, not saved. What that's going to do, so if the last result row is less than, our first row is gonna be on four, right? So our, if it's less than four, that means we have no data, then go to not saved. Okay, but what if it's less than five? If the last result row is less than five, that means we have just one row of data, less than five, then go to skip sort. I wanna sort those descending based on the row. So let's go to skip sort here, and I can skip to sort. Okay, so I like that, let's change that to lowercase. Okay, so once we skip the sort, now we're ready to sort because we know there's at least two rows of data. So I have that also an auto hotkey to make things a lot quicker. So you see that's pretty quick. Auto hotkey, free software, great, great thing. So what am I gonna sort it based on? I'm gonna sort it based on this row. T4 is going to be that, that cell. So T4, and I want it descending, T4. And I wanna make sure it's descending. And I also, what is the range? We're gonna call that 04 to T. So we'll change that to 04 all the way to T. Although really all we need is that row. That's the only thing important. So that's gonna set the row. So we wanna make sure that we set the right pay items, not tasks. Setting the right sheet here, so not tasks and not tasks here. Saving our work and continuing on. So once we sort it, now what we want to do is we want to start deleting the data. So I'm going to go down here. After the skip sort, we're going to delete the data. So I'm going to run a result. So for the result row, row equals starting at row four to the last result row, next result row. First thing I want to do is get that database, that pay item database row into a variable. So to do that, we're going to set that. So pay item database row simply equal to whatever's in T in the result row equals dot range T and the result row dot value. So that is our pay item database row. Once we have that, we can then delete it. So we're simply dot range pay. This is kind of a long variable. Let's just copy that pay item database row and colon and the pay item database row dot entire row dot delete. Okay, so delete pay item database row. Okay, so that's it. all we need to do is just simply loop through that each one and it's gonna delete them all. And sign. Okay, character there missing. All right, so continuing on. So that's all we need to do is simply loop through the data. All right, looks good. So well, again, we're going to save our work here and we're going to go back into the payments. We're gonna go click on the button and the icon, right click, assign macro, scroll down to payments, then delete, looking at right here and clicking OK. OK, so we're on number five. I'm going to again, saving our work, clicking delete payments. Are we sure? No, that's good. Delete payment, are we sure? Yes. It was going to delete payment. Now we're going to look in the payment list. Five is no longer here. Payment items, oops, five, this one is here. We're going to make sure we delete that one. OK, whoops, one thing here should be less than five, not greater than five. That's how it skipped those rows. OK, let's try this again. Go back into the payments, right? Let's go into previous. I want to go into one with multiple payments. OK, I see payment number two has two. Let's go ahead and delete. Oh, it looks like we have one row that still wasn't deleted. So we need to make an adjustment in our code. Make sure that it's less than five, which I want to make sure less than five is a skipping sort. Very, very good. That looks really good. So we've shown you how that we can now 
add brand new payments, select on multiple payments, multiple customers, automatically apply those payments, setting up those payments amount, adding that in automatically just as we did before, creating brand new payment types with action using conditional formatting on multiple payments, saving those payments, deleting those payments, using navigation to navigate, and creating a really incredible payments manager. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much for joining me on this comprehensive training. Don't forget to download this free template. It'll also include this brand new invoicing that I've just created. And of course, if you do want to support this channel, I've got 250 incredible templates on sale right now. So go ahead and check that out. I'll include the link down below. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week.